Welcome back to the Creative Boom podcast. I'm Katie Cowan, the founder and editor of Creative Boom, a magazine that I started in 2009 to support and celebrate the creative community. Up next, we have Jaheed Hussain and Yasmin Banks. Both are Salford University graduates in graphic design and have recently entered the working world, already making a name for themselves in Manchester. There's a little bit of a rumour on the grapevine that they might be starting a podcast in 2020 as well. So watch this space for further announcements. Jay is an intern at Yoke and on the side he runs the Fuse Directory, a non-profit platform celebrating ethnic minority creatives in the city. And Yaz has taken the leap straight into freelancing. I was curious to find out more, so met them both for a chat. I'm here at Cultureplex in Manchester with my next lovely guests who are smiling their heads (laughs) off at me right now. It's uh, Jaheed Hussain, who we can call Jay, and Yasmin Banks, who is uh, affectionately known locally as Yaz. (laughs) Yes, hello. The only way is up. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Hello, welcome. Yes. So I've invited you here because you two are just absolutely smashing it in the creative community at the moment. Do you want to start off, Yaz, by telling us a bit more about yeah. who you are and what, you, what you're doing? So I have just graduated from the University of Salford doing graphic design and decided to take the leap into full-time freelance graphic designer straight from university, which is scary, but it's going really well and really good and hopefully it's carry on this way. Well, you're doing really well because I see you at every single event in Manchester and I think you've just learned very quickly the trick that took me probably 20 years more to learn, which is to get yourself out there and go meet people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got like encouraged at university anyway to go to events, go to as many, speak to as many people and just carried on doing that. It's just in my nature. Like I see an event, I'm like, oh, I want to go to that, want to go to that, want to see who's there and speak and catch up with people because it's essentially... I recognise loads of people there now, so just, and it's a catch up. It absolutely is. There's an amazing community yeah, here in Manchester. Definitely, yeah, definitely. And Jay, you're you're absolutely. I mean, you, you you're interning somewhere, aren't you? Can you tell us a bit um, more about what yeah. you're doing? So um, I'm currently interning for York, and I also run Fuse, which is a non-profit directory, um, just trying to find the best creatives in Manchester who are also of colour. But that's amazing. And you started that because you you saw that there was probably a lack of support in that yeah, area. Yeah, definitely. Right? So um, during uni, so I graduated with Yaz as well um, from Salford, but oh, during you, uni. You both know each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we've, we've been mates for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's great. I realised that there was a lack of diversity and I thought mm. that has to be a change, especially for someone like myself who sort of felt like they didn't belong in the creative industry. Right. And um, I just wanted a platform which was open and inclusive for everyone to join in. Do you feel like a lot's changed in the last couple of years? Um, More so in the last couple of months than in the last couple of years. Mm. Um, I think as soon as I graduated, um, a lot of attention was focused on views Mm. and that's helped um, the creative community, especially um, in terms of getting support as well. I think it's just grown like so well. So that's excellent. So you've both found ways to build a network yeah. Yeah. and become known. And um, you're sort of meeting all these really interesting people that you're learning from as well. And they're learning from you. Um, do you are you both originally from Manchester? You're from Wigan, aren't I'm you? I'm from yes? Wigan. So mm. I've been around Manchester quite often, like when I was younger, like with my family and stuff like that. So I love the city anyway. So when I had the opportunity to come and study so close to the city, I was like, perfect like I can stay at home and then do something I love and being around a city I love as well exactly yeah, yeah it's the big city because yeah. I grew up locally I was down in Stoke-on-Trent way yeah, yeah. so Manchester was the big big place that you yeah. went shopping with you, your mum whilst your dad went and watched yeah. the football <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's great. exactly that um, and Manchester's changed a lot, hasn't it, over the last 10 years? I yeah, mean, definitely. Maybe you won't remember because you're both in your early 20s, but, you know, I'm I'm in my early 40s. I can say that. That makes me sound like I'm still young. Um, <laughs> and I can see how it's changed since I was, you know, 16 mm. years old. It's just transformed beyond, beyond belief. You wouldn't have, back in the mid-90s, have wanted to live in town, mm. um, you know, and all the derelict buildings and all the empty mm. shops, you know. Yeah. It, it was always great. Manchester always had this kind of spirit. Um, and it's nice to see that it's becoming more so, you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely got a brilliant creative community. Definitely, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. The Northern Quarter has just, like, grown. Like, when, mm. obviously, coming in as a child, so, like, when I was 
11, 12, whatever, like the main priority was to go shopping mm. or so around the Arndale. And so didn't yeah. really know the Northern Quarter, but even passing through it was like, it's not really built up as much, but compared to now, like, it's amazing. Like, there's so many different places you can go see live gigs and coffee shops and studios and stuff like that. I suppose our parents wouldn't have thought twice about living in the city. <laughs> yeah. It was more kind of like commuting. Yeah, definitely. Whereas our, I say our generation, I think I'm just about in your generation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I'm, I'm just about a millennial. No, I think I'm a zenial. Mm. Um, which is, does that make you a millennial or are you kind of... Have you even gone into this kind of absurd? I don't know. I'm not sure. Because there's a Generation Z. You might Gen be in that, yeah. yeah. I think we're Gen Z. Yeah. Definitely. Gen Z. Gen. I, don't, I haven't even read up about Gen Z. I, I don't know if they have a bad rep or... Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. No, I have not really looked up. But yeah. Really. Yeah, probably Gen Z. Yeah. So I'll just take what anyone says, really. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when did you realise, um, Yaz, that you wanted to become a graphic designer? Was it something that you knew from so, a young... So, when I was younger, through school, I was always creative. I was always... The art subjects were, like, my main priority. Like, I kind of, like, ignored everything else. I wanted to, like, not concentrate in, like, history and math. Like, so I wanted to be a fashion designer when I was younger. That was the original, like, aim but then found photography and I found like media studies and then I found like something called graphic products, which is slightly different graphic design, but it's now shifted to graphic design. I was just like, oh my God, I can do absolutely anything. I can do fashion design. I can do like image making and like that's just where I want to go. So that was probably, I was around 15 when I dis first discovered and I was like, that's great. That's, my head, that's where I'm heading. Yeah. So you were quite determined and... Was it a similar path for you, Definitely Jay? Definitely similar. Um, during secondary school, I think one of my first visits as an art student was at Fred Alders when it first started. Which oh, I, I think love Fred Alders. That definitely yeah. changed my perception on art and what I could do. And then during secondary, we like my, like like ours, like, yeah, we just discovered product design yeah. and design and tech in general. And then that kind of springboarded me to becoming a graphic designer as well. Fantastic. So where are you working now? Where, where are you part of the team? Uh, currently at York, at York Studios. But, um I also do freelance stuff on the side as well. You're a busy man. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, but I enjoy it so much. It's just, I love being around everywhere, even here at Cultureplex. It's yeah, just, it's, it's just an amazing really space, yeah. isn't it? You yeah. get to meet so many new faces as well. And yeah. you start recognising people, don't you, when you're definitely. out and about? Like I, my main ground, if I'm not at home working, is Foundation Coffee House as well in the Northern Quarter and like you just recognise people and like mm. you get chatting to people and like it's just a, even if they don't know anything about design or you just get chatting to like oh what are you doing blah 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 like I've been chatting to a couple of people last week they were like what are you actually because I see you quite often what actually is it that you do so like I get to show them my work and like maybe get work out of them you never know <laughs> what the connections are I love it yeah. entrepreneurial spirit yeah. <laughs> and it's so um scathing and and sort of Absolutely. under the radar because she's she's got this such friendly face but actually <laughs> secretly she's thinking about how she can win work yeah. from you <laughs> very smart I mean I, I think that's what university really taught us just to be involved mm, definitely be that's, into it that's really encouraging that was Salford University yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. it looks like a good university definitely like the network like opportunities that we have like we have people coming in like through the three years we were there like speaking and like setting projects or just even guest lecturers so like you get to know people through that way mm -hmm. and then connect through social media and then sure. keep in contact post graduation and further because you guys grew up with social media yeah yeah <laughs> i didn't <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy because like now just don't rely on social media but it's a heavy part of my job and what I do and how I get myself out there and connect yeah. with people. It's just a way of expressing yourself, really. Definitely, um, definitely. I think it can help your confidence as well, definitely, if you get yeah. good feedback, mm. which is always the best way yeah. going forward. Yeah, absolutely, because it, it is about building confidence and experience. And I, I always um, I always to sort of like to ask the question about social media, do you sort of find it overall a very positive thing in that case or do you have moments where you're like oh my god I'm never going to be good as good as all There's... these other people and oh my god everybody's out and having such a better time than me mm. I mean I'm 41 and 
you know, I, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's natural just to yeah. compare yourself, especially as a creative. Yeah. But um, mm. it's, it's sort of been a learning curve as well. It's sort of taught me not to compare myself to others. Oh my God, you two are just... <laughs> I think, yeah, I think Yaz has also learned yeah, that. Definitely, recently, like, definitely. you just see other people, what they're doing. And it's just like, yeah, it's cool, really well done, like, congrats, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Like, I support you totally. But yeah. it's like, why am I not doing that? But then it's like, you shouldn't really think why you're not doing something it should be a motivation for you to keep going and keep pushing yourself and not get bogged down in social media too much could we yeah. do this on a weekly basis <laughs> where you just reassure me and <laughs> <laughs> make me feel better about yeah. life <laughs> because uh, you know social media has been really good for me because mm. i wouldn't have been able to do creative boom yeah. without having you know instagram and yeah, twitter yeah. and building that network it's changed a lot in the last 10 years and it feels like people are moving away from Facebook. I mean, is Facebook mm. something you're still on? Or I'm um, very, very rarely. occasionally. I'm, it's um, more for like friends from high school. Events I connect as well. with. Mm. Yeah, but I you, yeah. don't use it professionally at all. I think it depends on um, like if organisations use it to post about what they're doing. I think that's the best way of using Facebook for me personally. Yeah. But then also um, like joining groups of like-minded creatives who are also doing similar stuff. Yeah, because I saw the other box yeah, on Facebook. I've, I've joined them, yeah. Is, is it a... They're also a, similar to Fuse. They're yeah. their own network of oh, ethnic great. minority creatives, but also they're quite global. Like, um, they've, they've got a, low, like, a ton of followers. Mm -hmm. And in the group, there's about 5,000 people. That's amazing. And there's always opportunities coming up every day. And just, you get to meet these brilliant people. I love that you've done this Fuse directory as well, because it not only supports other people mm. in the same sort of spirit as... You know, Creative Boom, yeah. which I'm quite proud about. It's quite it's quite inspirational, actually, to me, Creative Boom. Oh, and that's like nice to other, know. Like various other people as well. Um, that's great because it's yeah. 10 years old and I, I always worry about it being, you know, irrelevant and young people no. who are graduating now, you know, do they still find it helpful? Should I keep the tips articles on there? You know, we all go through these things. It's all completely human, but mm. it opens so many doors. Um, and that was what I was going to ask, you know, with mm. the Fuse directory, have you found that having this side project where you're supporting others has yeah. sort of, you know, brought up all these opportunities? It has, yeah. Um, not just for me, for the people as well. That's excellent. So, um, recently I did, um, I did, so basically on Fuse there's a feature um, and we do a conversation with a creative on That's the directory. Excellent. And this creative is called Jessica uh -huh. and she's, she's part of MIF Um so she works there full time, but because of this article, is that she, Man she, Manchester International yeah, Festival? Yeah, yeah. yeah. she um, received like two different offers from um, places in Media Keys, and then she messaged me over Christmas. She was like, "I hope you had a great break, but I just want you to know that this is working and this is amazing." How did you feel? It was amazing. Like <laughs> I did not expect that at all. Um, it was out of the blue, and she's been a very busy person. But it was because of Fuse. That's fantastic. Yeah. I do get emails from people all the time. And there was one recently that said, you featured my work in 2009. I'm mm. like, oh my God, did I? <laughs> um, and, you know, you really helped me get my first client. And I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, bigger. I'm just doing something I'm really passionate about. Yeah. And yeah. you don't really sort of think too much about how that might be, you mm. know, um, affecting other people in in a good way, hopefully, hopefully a good hopefully, way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that must be a real boost to your confidence. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I want to push forward though with views because mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much potential. It's just about um, getting that motivation and that support and but, finding the time because you yeah, don't want to burn yourself I'm out. Sure. I, I've I found the time recently though. I think I'm I've pretty well on my time management. So I've got competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> competition, competition. Yeah. I better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, um, what are you doing at the moment then? You're freelancing, yes. yes. So I have just, I've got a couple of projects in the works um, with a couple of like wellness companies, so sort of branding nice. for that. Um, I am on the Petra Kucha team in Manchester. Yeah. So I'm working. With Carl? Yes. So I'm working towards doing programs for that and helping out as I how I can with that with the events and workshops mm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I have actually just secured a job for three months 
over in America over the summer, which I've not told anyone wow. about until wow. right now. That's amazing. <laughs> you heard it here uh, first. Well done. So it's a, basically a graphic designer for a summer camp over in America. Oh, that sounds amazing. amazing. Yeah. Whereabouts is it? In Philadelphia. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be really fun. It's something that I've never done before. I've never travelled that far before, but yeah. always something I wanted to do. And mixing it with work, it's just a perfect opportunity. And yeah. What do your parents think about that? They're just so excited. <laughs> like I told them the other day, and they were just like, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come with you. I was like, no, I'm going to my own. But yeah, they're just amazed. They're just like, how can one, like, how can one job like go so far mm. and like it literally came through a message over on Instagram which is crazy like, because of everything that you're sharing on there and they're sharing. impressed with your work yeah. and comes yeah. back to our conversation on social media absolutely yeah. Yeah. Um, you should start your own podcast <laughs> <laughs> it's just taking over he's, he's got plans hasn't he he's going to take over create boom and oh, no. I'm just going to be left behind in the ashes waving and saying what did I ever do wrong me. <laughs> Take me back. <laughs> so yeah, that's really that's exciting. Great. That's great. And what about yourself? Are you are you got any plans to travel this year and go and see the world? And... Um, I've got a speaking gig coming up at Glasgow Zine Festival. Wow. Which uh, I've told you I was about, but no one else. <laughs> um, so they want me to speak about Fuse, which is great. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, and I've never been to Scotland as much as I want to go. I've I've never been, so this is my chance. Glasgow is um, an amazing city. Yeah, yeah. I love Scotland. Yeah. Uh, recently, I've secured a working space with Colony, um, so I get to work with them, Fab. create a few social media um, assets. Amazing. And I'm also on the Pitch Coach team with Yaz. <laughs> but uh, I, you two I are run, unstoppable. <laughs> I run the um, the workshop um, stuff, so I make sure everything goes smoothly, which is just brilliant. I love. I just love it. Yeah, that's great to hear. So you know. Is there anything that's currently like, I don't know, bugging you that you wish would you'd see change aside from everything we discussed mm. with views? I mean, is there anything that you have come across in the creative community that you think actually that needs to be kind of changed? Maybe the through education and university and stuff like that, yeah. people students tend to compare themselves not only to each other but to people in the industry. So then that has a detrimental effect on their work and what they do and think, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I just want to say, to, like, if the student's listening, probably is student's listening, that... Of course, everyone's listening. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. The whole world. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say that don't compare yourself. Do your work for you and your practice and where you want to push your practice and people will be there to support your work. Because when I was through, went through university, like we had an amazing support team with our mm. lecturers and yep. they, they supported us in like, our creative freedom and stuff like that. But I know that people tend to think like, well, I have to do this to fit into this studio or to this agency. But it's more of your transferable skills, what you've learned doing tense projects rather than your style or because your style is always improving, you're always learning. You're yeah, always you're always going to be... Yeah. investigating where that because goes. Because where and... I am now designing stuff, I wasn't last this time last year, mm. like yeah. completely shifting in that one year, which... I totally agree with that. People mm. just yeah. need to remember that they do continue to grow even past Yeah, university. they can't be perfect right away. No, it's part of the process. Yeah. I mean, is there a lot of pressure on, on young people these days? I mean, there's pressure Definitely. on me. But <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. Because we graduated this year and the pressure just piled on us mm -hmm. all. Um I've been speaking to so many people from my course mm -hmm. and they've all had their troubles just finding a job or just in general just coping with like, you know, added living costs without yeah. having the education system there to back you up. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe more conversations about mental health, yeah, especially in the definitely. creative system. Yeah, I, I agree with that. System. I think there's, especially, well, I might be generalising here and I might be completely wrong, but it, my impression is that Britain is quite bad for that. Yeah. In that we don't really talk about mistakes or failure. In America, it's worshipped and celebrated. Yeah. You know, if you fail at something, everyone's like, you go for it. <laughs> Good on you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, I promised myself I wouldn't do any of my <laughs> stupid impressions. <laughs> but yeah, so... Mental health is a really good topic to, to move on to, actually. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, I've been talking a little bit 
through these episodes about what I've been through recently. Hmm. And I'm not going to go there too much because it's a yeah. completely new um, territory for me to talk about, you know, yeah, I haven't been doing very well. You know, yeah. I've not been coping. Yeah. Lots of personal stuff, lots of kind of professional stuff. You know, sometimes things happen in life and, and you just have to try and battle through it. I'm okay now. I'm in a good place yeah, now because I'm, I'm just want to reassure you because you both <laughs> looked hugely <laughs> concerned there. I'm very happy. Good Do not worry. Good. Um, and the podcast for Creative Boom is one of the things that I said I would do this year because I've always wanted to do it, yeah. but I just didn't have the time and probably yeah. didn't have the courage. Yeah. Um, so I felt some of that pressure and that was really odd for me because mm. when I was young, when I left university, I, in 2000, um, I, please don't tell me you weren't born before then. When were you born? 1998. 1998. Oh. 98. Oh my God. 98. What was I doing in 98? I had um, a shaved head. Really? And Doc Martens and dreadlocks and amazing. flowery dresses. Amazing. I don't know just if it was amazing. It. Just picture it. <laughs> drawing uh, loads of, you've been encouraging me now, drawing lots of, uh, um, of my favourite bands uh, oh. in Tipex on my Doc Martens. That's what we did in those bands? days. Um, back then, um, it would have been obviously um, uh, Nirvana, obviously, and I had bells on my um, laces. So when I walked around, I'd just sound like Santa Claus. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and yeah. Affleck's Palace was still here, and oh, I, that used to be my yeah. kind of yeah. playground, and I used to love yeah, going course, in there. Yeah. Loved it. And um, they still do the posters in there, and the badges, and the, the little pin mm. badges that you could sew into your jeans mm. when yeah. you wanted to be really cool. <laughs> get an apple or we'll sew that in no, I'm being ironic um, but yeah going back to mental health <laughs> this Sorry. is the thing you're encouraging me I got on tangents yeah, that was my fault. <laughs> but I came out of university and I was kind of I was quite cocky and confident and I just sort of had this whole attitude just going to go for it yeah. do it mm -hmm. fine what I never thought would happen and actually it's a cliche is as you get older you become more frightened and you start to uh, it's not not in everybody's case but it is quite a common thing. You you become more afraid and you get a bit bogged down yeah. by the responsibilities of life yeah. and mortgages and all that kind of stuff. You've got all this to come. It'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. Gosh, <laughs> this is supposed to be a reassuring. <laughs> but um, yeah, and so I really got the fear. And so I couldn't do this podcast and I couldn't start anything new. And I was like, what, what am I afraid of? Yeah. So I've, I've come out the other side. I'm, I'm in a much better place. And I've said, do you know what? screw it people yeah. are right yeah. when you get to 40 you just stop caring <laughs> but then you two don't seem like you care about what anybody thinks so I'm like where have I been going wrong <laughs> these last 10 years you know I just feel like it's a it's just a switch of there's so much out there now to do mm. with the mental health and your wellness and your well-being it's just like I don't I tend to not think about what other people think of me. I used to all the time. Yeah. Like that was the main thing. Was like, well, what if I do this because some and someone else thinks this? And like, oh no, I've done something wrong. But that isn't the case at all. Like, I just I've mm. just learnt that no one probably cares what you do. So you just live your life separately. Mm. And it's just again, social media. Going back to it can have a really bad effect on how it can you think and how you act, but. You just gotta remember to be yourself and go with that. As not compare yourself to embrace other people. Who embrace you are. And, yourself. And you know you're wonderful. You both yeah. are, and and so am I. I'm amazing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? You have to jokes aside. You do have to embrace who you are, and that mm. takes a lot of confidence, doesn't mm. it? And it it takes a lot of courage yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. to just really fully embrace who you yeah. are. I mean. Yeah. What you've just said there has taken me 40 odd years to learn, you know. And you know, you know it, you know yeah. it deep down in your heart. You're like, yeah, I need to get a grip. Because yeah. um, I think if you're stuck somewhere, the only person that's going to be able to create change is yourself. Mm, and definitely. God, think, wise. <laughs> truth, as they say. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag, hashtag truth. truth. Hashtag truth. <laughs> yeah, and realizing that is the first step forward. Absolutely. Yeah. So what else do you do, Jay, to keep yourself, you know, in check and keep yourself happy? I talk to my mates quite often as much as I, I can because um, I'm going to get tearful <laughs> this is just lovely because <laughs> there's like now I'm by myself it's like there's there's this easier um, chance to feel isolated yeah yeah. so talking to your friends going out whenever you can um, just 
chilling and just talking about whatever, you know, doing podcasts, you know, like this. <laughs> That's lovely. It's, it's amazing. It does so much for your mental health. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I went through a stage through probably middle of college, so I was about 16, 17, where my mental health just went down, plummeted. Oh, and that was only because I wasn't happy around the environment I was mm. in. Mm-hmm. Um, we had loads of time off through college, so I was very, like, like Jay has just said, isolated, time to myself, like, and then came to university and I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to feel like this again because obviously we have loads of time off in summer. Yeah. But because of the people I met and because of how the course was and how open we could be and how ourselves we could be, yeah. My mental health went up, and it was just so much. I was so much happier in in myself, and like meeting new people, and just different environments. So sometimes it is about the environment you're in. You maybe not around best people for you, and you just have to take a step back and think: Is that why I'm feeling the way I am? Are the people surrounding me? the best people for me or not like it's true isn't it yeah. you have yeah. to surround yourself what do they say surround yourself with radiators who bring you warmth <laughs> rather than drainers yes, yes. yes. <laughs> who support you yeah, yeah definitely yeah yeah you have to you have to carry on going through that your whole life actually mm. you'll come across people who initially might seem um you know like a radiator and then you realize after a while that actually they're probably Probably, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, if you're listening, <laughs> we're not friends anymore. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's true. You kind of do think um, that you ha- it, if you surround yourself with all this good stuff and you make sure that you're constantly, you know, looking out for each other. Because yeah. you, you always worry, don't you? You don't want to be a drainer. Yeah. So mm. you don't want to... Do you ever feel like you can't talk to your mates because you don't want to be like, you know this negative thing that's just bringing up all their problems or do you have such a great relationship with your it's friends? It's more that- about knowing that, that if they are your true friends, if they're there for you, they're going to accept if you're having a bad day, if you're having negative vibes. Yeah. Um, negative and- vibes. No, I'm not <laughs> say that with... <laughs> Doing the peace sign. Call, yeah. <laughs> Inverted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just about having the right people around you and if they accept that you're having a bad day and if the people, if you have people around you that don't accept that, then they're not the people well, that should be in your life. That's a lovely bit of wisdom. It's Definitely. true, isn't it? You really yeah. do find, and this is what they say, yeah. when you're going through a hard time, that's when you find out who your friends are. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh, that's great. So what's happening um, in Manchester next for you guys? Are you going to carry on apart from like taking over the world and going <laughs> and leaving us how dare you yeah, leave yeah, us and go to America I'm going to miss you I'm <laughs> not going to see you at any of these events um, and you're going up to Glasgow to do talks I think that's going to be the start of something more Hopefully. I think I think Definitely. you're going to be on the touring network and <laughs> you're going to, I'm going to see you in a couple of years time I'm going to be like whoa mm. I really need to do more talks <laughs> I think for the next couple of months I'm just going to be here about Manchester just doing what I usually do Mm-hmm. Um, keep doing Fuse. So, uh, I mean, I post every day on Fuse. You do? Uh, every weekday. And I just want to keep that going as much as I can. And, yeah, just keep going, really. That's it. It's a shame, isn't it, that we have to kind of, like, you know, highlight these things. Mm. Yeah. You know, it, to me, it's just... I was talking to Jane Boyer earlier. Yeah. And I was saying to her, I forget sometimes that I'm a woman. Mm. And, you know, does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, you'll be reminded of it. Yeah. Uh, because of some kind of negative thing in society yeah. or whatever. I'd be like, oh, for God's sake, can't I just be Katie who's yeah. creative? Why does my gender have to come into it, you know? Um, we realised this actually early on in our careers because we did a project about yeah. women in design um, mm. in second year and it was my first collaboration with the Oz. And it was a zine yep. called 70 because uh, we realised that in the creative system, education system, there's 60% females to 40% males. Mm-hmm. But then in senior positions in the industry itself, yeah. it's about 70% males, 30% females. Yeah. Like, it's where crazy. do they all go? And we realised that super early on. I think that's helped us uh, in terms of our creative personality yeah, and who definitely. we've become today. Yeah, because you learn them things that maybe you're not taught in in university because you're taught about the... The, the software you need to use or whatever or so you're not really taught about these issues but from that project they've actually 
decided to do more projects based on actual like lifestyle things and different like social change social yeah. change and stuff like that so so you've changed the curriculum <laughs> no, i wouldn't say change I don't, the I don't, I don't <laughs> you have had an impact it had an impact yeah. wow yes that's brilliant yeah so do you think um i think of everything that you've achieved so far and you're you know you you are young mm. um mm. And obviously, you know, I could be mistaken as your little buddy because I don't look a day over 25. Um, oh, God, did I just really just say that? Um, <laughs> well, I like, I, I probably in my own little head, when I see you both at um, the events around here, I probably think, they probably think I'm really young and cool and hip. And, oh, God. I do. Oh, God. Fist bump. Oh, Jay, Fist Jay. Bump. That was really funny, actually, because um, I was talking to you um, about you and that, uh, moment yeah. we that beautiful moment we shared <laughs> at Design Manchester. I was just sat down ready to watch Paula shirt, and um, Jay and all of his friends walked past, and he just saw me and he went, "Oh!" and put out his face. Yeah. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, "Yeah, I'm not old and past it yet. It's totally fine." But I, li I did. I'd sat in my little seat and thought, "Oh, that's so lovely." And I had that moment, like you were saying before, with yeah. Fuse. You know, you help people. It's really oh, nice. It's nice I'm to have an help. excuse yeah. to you know go out and talk that was, to people. That was just natural, though. It felt natural. Yeah. It felt very natural it did i felt like yeah. you know it was the start of something beautiful a beautiful <laughs> friendship <Yeah. laughs> um so i've kind of been freelancing for myself i actually mm. grew an agency for a while and then my husband and i um found that it just wasn't for us for various reasons and and now we're back to sort of a small consultancy just the two of us yeah. very boring very long story but um i've been sort of working for myself for the last when did I go freelance? 27 years old I was. So that was 2000 and 2008, 2009. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it was 2007. What am I talking about? So <laughs> what happened back then is I did really well. I left. Um, I was working for a PR agency. Still really good friends with quite a few yeah, people yeah. who work there and got a lot of kind of experience and grounding there. And it was good. And I went freelance because I didn't like being told what to do. Right, yeah. I was a bit of a rebel. <laughs> and um, I've been I've been working for myself ever since. But a couple of years into it, um, the global recession happened. Right. Yeah. And I lost all of my clients all oh, overnight, apart what? from one. Yeah, so I thought, oh, man, what am I going to do? Oh, and I actually went so to crazy. go. I know. I went for a job interview. And it was a good job. Mm. It involved a bit of a drive, a bit of a commute. Yeah. And I did it. I went there. I spent one day there. And the next day, um, they were planning to go to London from somewhere in Staffordshire. Yeah. And um, I had to be down there at like five in the morning so that we could drive to London to go to this meeting. And it was one of two that they had to do that week that I had to go and do. So I was really annoyed because I like my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got home that night from the first day and I went to Tom. I can't. I, can't, I just can't. Mm, I cannot yeah. work for someone yeah. else. Yeah. I hate it. I hate somebody dictating my hours yeah. and telling me that I've got to go to London in a car and get up at five in the morning or whatever. And I had to, because in, in those days I didn't have, I would say in those days, we all had mobile phones. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think I had his mobile number. It's like I think I'm in my 60s or something. <laughs> and um, I, I, could, I didn't have his number. I couldn't ring him and it was too late and it was too early and... Tom said, you're just going to have to drive down there. So I drove down to this place in Staffordshire at this agency. And the guy was waiting there and the, I don't think even the sun had come up. It was freezing cold winter morning. And I said, yeah, um, about London. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to come. And I got, and he went, OK, fair enough. Um, and he got back in the car. He said, I've got to go anyway. I've got to go to this meeting. Yeah. But uh, thanks for letting us know. And I said, don't worry about me. <laughs> and then I got in my car and drove back. And that was when I kind of started coming up with the idea for Creative Boom. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I thought, right, I want to help others because Twitter is really yeah. struggling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, loads of people on there. Very different time. We're talking, you know, 10, 11 years yeah. ago. Um, anyway, I'm coming to the very uh, long-winded way of asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> Without having anything to compare it to. Because you weren't, I mean, gosh, how old were you in 2007? Not very um, not very old at all. But it was bad. It was really tough. Yeah. And last year, because of things that were going on politically, it started to feel like it again. Mm. But you haven't really experienced that, have you? You're kind of, you're, do you feel like the economy and everything that's happening at the moment is quite positive and there's lots of opportunity? Um, well, not really. 
in a way because coming out of graduate, like graduating, and then looking for jobs, like we were told, like we weren't told there was going to be like loads of jobs there. Everyone's because obviously we know that we know everything's going on, but there was just nothing around at all to get to look at to get to apply for and so it was really hard in that sense coming out straight away and thinking oh no what am I going to do like, is that why you went freelance yeah right. well I went had a couple of internships at a couple of places because mm-hmm. that was the best bet for me at the mid like I wanted to keep obviously in the industry and good keep, work like, experience as yeah, well yeah definitely a good experience to put on my CV and all that but then I was like I love it I love different places and that's kind of like oh I want to go to different places I don't want to sit down and settle down in one place I want to be able to go work for like three four weeks at one place and then maybe do my own thing or work in Manchester or go to another place I want to be able to meet new people and meet like a diverse team and like just interact with other people on a daily basis rather than being bogged down in the same place that's why I decided freelancing is for me and like yeah it's it's a combination yeah yeah yeah. it's hard like thinking about what where's the money coming from and stuff like that but hell yeah (laughs) (laughs) but if I just keep on keep on going and keep getting the jobs and keep making connections and it's just slowly getting there well you're doing everything right absolutely Mm -hmm. you're getting out there and networking and you're very very likable you know sometimes sometimes (laughs) she isn't being annoying (laughs) 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 only joking but yeah where's this where's this come from because what what did your mum and dad do for a living um so my dad has just changed his job but he was a match analyst for Wigan Warriors oh, right. so rugby teams and like stuff yeah. like that quite but sporty now, yes but now he's moved into a lecturer position in a university yeah well, it's a technical demonstrator technically but he's still he still teaches in the university doing sports psychology and stuff like that and my mum again works in a nursery school so she's teaching like small kids and stuff like that so they oh. always had like the set jobs so like when I went to them I was like I want to do design I want to do this blah 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 and it was like yeah cool because you've always supported me whatever I want to do sounds like they they went for jobs that they really wanted to yeah enjoy. yeah definitely yeah and that's been something they've been you yeah know, definitely given you. like so they've always supported me from day one and then as when I left university I was like they was like oh what do you want to do then where, where, where's your life going and I was like oh I don't know I'm just gonna look for jobs blah blah, blah. and then I was like no I want to go freelance and I was like so I told them and they was like cool let's do it let's go oh, for it and so they've always supported me which I'm like so grateful for because they could have been like no you you need to get a job you need you need the money blah 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 but they've not no they've always supported me which has been really nice I think your parents are quite a lot younger than than mine <laughs> sorry sorry mum and dad <laughs> but in, only in terms of they came from a different generation where you did just get a secure mm. job and so when I sort of said mm. I was going freelancing I think they were they, they were obviously massively proud and yeah. supportive yeah, but yeah, yeah. petrified for me mm. because they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. what you know you've not got a yeah. job yeah um you've not got secure income but yeah. you know and I was at the time 27 and quite feisty still mm. and I was like yeah it'll be alright what's the worst that can happen be okay why wouldn't anybody want to hire me <laughs> little hair toss there um, so was that the same for you what, what, what was your um, upbringing like what were your mum and dad well, up to well um, I'm British Asian so I come mm-hmm. from Bengali um, I think uh, that's my ethnic group so I'm Bengali um, both my parents have been really supportive but my mum has been like 100% uh, supportive, but my dad really doesn't understand what I do still. Right. Because there's, uh, there's this thing with Asian parents and this, um, they don't feel like arts and media is a job. Um, like It's like a suitable job. Right. Um, in terms of like bringing in the money, like you say. Um, so my dad, at, at first he was like, you know, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing with your life, <laughs> son? <laughs> yeah. uh, but he's fine with it now. Um He's he's a freelance chef, so he's oh wow. He goes every like in every other month he goes to different places and he just cooks. That's good. Yeah, um, that sounds like a really interesting <laughs> job. Really yeah, Whereabouts uh, does he go? But anywhere in Oldham that takes him really. Oh yeah. right, okay. Yeah. Um, so he doesn't go all over the world. No, 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 no. Not that okay. big. <laughs> link link in the uh, description <laughs> to uh, Jay's dad's website. <laughs> and my mum uh, was a social care worker. Right. Um, but she she's not working right now. But yeah. This that, is where you her. get your very caring <laughs> nature from. Where I think you, so, maybe, yeah. yeah. Want to help other people. Yeah. And... yeah, she used to work with kids quite a lot as well. So you've both got 
mums who work with children. Yeah. My mum yeah. works with children. Oh. Well, she did. Sorry, she's retired now. Yeah. But she's she's fantastic. I think that's probably something we all share, isn't it? In, yeah. in terms of you know you care about giving back because you Definitely. you do give back as well. You you you're you know you're not involved with fees, yeah, yeah, but. Yeah. You have uh, got involved in lots of kind of good causes, haven't yeah, you, definitely. locally? Yeah, definitely. Well, one thing I've just, just taken on like recently is the part of the One Million Mentors with Sovereign University. Yeah. So I'm mentoring a current third year student That's at brilliant. Sovereign Uni. Just a little bit of help every month, like an hour or two, just anything that she's got to ask me. And then I, I encourage her to go to events. I'm like, go to mm. these events, go to these. So it's really nice to see, like recently I saw a, posting stuff on her Instagram and engaging more and I'm like I gave her that information I'm like I feel like a proud a proud parent but I feel like you've been mother duck cleaning yes. seeing them sort of fly yes. it's, it's, it's really nice it is. and I didn't realize that um the university did that course because yeah. having a mentor is is you know we can all do with a mentor yeah, can't we yeah, somebody yeah. to just give us that little bit of encouragement yeah often it just takes one little thing I mean I have this lovely friend, he's a bit younger than me and he was working in Crewe, uh, but living in uh, Manchester. Mm. And his lovely girlfriend, she was working in Manchester, but he had to get the train from Manchester to Crewe every mm. day. He's a talented guy, he's a software developer. And all I said when we were having a pint one Sunday, why don't you just get a job in Manchester? Yeah. Mm. There's loads of jobs. They'd bite your arm off. They yeah. need <laughs> software developers up here and they, there's no one. Why don't you just get a job in Manchester? You'd have an easy commute. Life would be easier. Mm. Next time I saw him, he was like, yeah, I've got a job in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I wanted to thank you for uh, um, encouraging me to do that. He doesn't, he doesn't actually talk like that. He's, he's a very so smart cool. guy. And I was like, yeah, but you, you could have done that. Uh, but it's weird, isn't it? I was talking to Jane about this, Jane Boyer. And I was saying it's it's so it's so weird when it comes to our own stuff. Yeah, we're not very good at telling ourselves. Yeah, we're great at helping other people. Yeah, yeah. we're great at designing other people's brands. Yeah, but when it comes to our own stuff, we kind of go. Oh, it's so <laughs> but I don't know. It's like it's just the fact of seeing someone else doing something. Like you don't really see yourself progressing as much like every day. But like when you see someone else and. I don't know, speak for yourself. I can now play <laughs> somewhere over the rainbow on my new piano. <laughs> yes, I, yes, <laughs> no, I agree. Piano. It's great. I agree. I it love, is. Love but like, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, you know, you, you, we do progress every day. And every year I do this thing where I like look back and I go, okay, what were the good things? Yeah. And, and you, it's all too easy to focus on where you went wrong, mm. the mistakes you make. You know, those awful moments yeah. where you kind of relive them and yeah. your face flushes yeah. and you're staring at the ceiling going... God, why am I such a failure? <laughs> why can't I be more like my mom? Um, and then you'll just, you know, you. you but I, I, I don't tend to have those moments anymore, which is great because now yeah. I look back and I go, hang on, where did I go right? What yeah. were the great things that happened this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. And I now keep the emails people send me and yeah. I print them out and I stick them on the wall because yeah. it's good That's to remind good. yourself yeah, of yeah, these yeah, things, nice isn't reminder. it? Yeah. Do you do that every year? Do you find that you get to the end of the year and you think, right, what did I do right? What can I do better next year? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I suppose we all do that, don't definitely. we? Definitely, yeah. yeah it's sort of it's, it's just nice to look back at your year, like you said, and just reflect and think where, where I was at the start of the year compared mm. to where yeah. I am now. And it's just weird how in the in the moment you don't see the little things you're doing, but at the end you're like, oh, that was a really good year. And But well, it's really nice to reflect. I really enjoy reflecting <laughs> on my past year, especially. I think, well, I think it's important, definitely. Yeah, because you need to know where you're going, don't yeah. you? I mean, at the start of uh, 2019, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any. F I didn't have any experience. I didn't have Fuse. Yeah. And then by the end of 2019, I've been at Design Manchester, mm. did Fuse, got an award. It just it's just happened over the time, even though I didn't realise it. You won an award. What was that for? Yeah. Um, so Salford, um, in general, they do they host a awards night uh, for the arts and media um, block, Rap. and I won the art and design award for Fuse. That's amazing. Yeah, so my tutor, Danny, love Danny, <laughs> he nominated me and so did Dylan, who's a pal, uh, on the course as well. Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. Yeah. So now you've got all these things you've achieved. You've got 2020 shining brightly <laughs> ahead of you. It must feel like, you know, you're on top of the world. <laughs> it doesn't a minute, but I hope I hope that sticks. Like, I mean, you're going to be in America. I mean, <laughs> top of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Great things are going to happen in America. That's going to be amazing. America, prepare yourself. <laughs> Yaz is coming. Yaz is on the <laughs> She's coming. She's coming. Yeah, that's incredible. 
Yeah. Well, it's been so lovely talking to you both. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, you too. Us. Yeah, definitely. I Thank think, you. I think we can expect some amazing things from you both. I know you've achieved so much already <laughs> and already overtaken everyone else in terms of, you know... <laughs> I hope so. I hope yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's been lovely chatting to you and I wish you all the best. Thank you. you. Too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. You've been listening to the Creative Boom podcast with me, your host, Katie Cowan. If you'd like to find out more or subscribe and leave us a review, you can do so by visiting creativeboom.com forward slash podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at Creative Boom or on Instagram at Creative Boom Mag. Until next time.